Greetings, Kerbinauts. This is Kerbal Space Program. I'm Bob Fitch, and this is episode number two of the AMA Turbo Time. How can I learn something about KSP as fast as possible? Well, I get asked a lot about how to set up a remote tech network. This is how you can do it. First, you need remote tech. If you don't have that, go here to install it. The craft I made is very close to stock. However, this is what my current installation directory looks like. You can see that I used stock. I have AIES, but I didn't use any parts from it. And I added surface lights because you gotta have more lights. If you want this craft file, a link to it is in the description down below this video. You will note that because this is a stock launch, we have gone up to 10 kilometers and pitched over 45 degrees. We're going to hold that position until we can get our entire launch here going up to about an hour and 45 minutes on its orbital period. The configuration we're ultimately looking for is going to be just like this. We're going to start off by having this launch right here go up to that 145, then it's going to drop off a satellite that will put it up at 2868.75 kilometers. The initial capsule only goes out this far to about 50 minutes because it wants to raise its periapsis to a two hour orbital period and then drop one off every two hours so that they're spaced out by two hours because a synchronous orbit is six hours and we have three satellites. So six divided by three is two hours. You could do this with three different launches that are spaced two hours apart as well, but this is way more fun. The first one has been dropped off and sent on its way. We get it up to that 2868 kilometers and we circularize there. We're going to put it at an orbital period of six hours. With two maneuver nodes coming up, you could use Kerbal Alarm Clock to show you when you hit each one. The first one will be the capsule. You want to get the periapsis out of the atmosphere at least 70 kilometers and then set it to the two hour orbital period. The second maneuver node is the satellite. That one goes to a six hour orbital period and you need to be as precise as you can. So use your RCS with shift in fine tune mode in order to get it to as close to six hours as you can possibly get it. The next maneuver might need to be that the capsule raises the second satellite up because otherwise the satellite won't be in communication from the first one when we drop it off. We do need to start pointing things around though, so switch to that satellite before it's released and make sure that it's all set up, ready to go. Before you decouple it, point the dish over at the first one that we already launched. Remember, if you're not going to have communication of it right away, that the solar panels need to be pointed toward the sun. The capsule and remaining satellite flip around and retro burn in order to bring that orbital period back down to two hours for the last release. Remember to go kind of slow with these because you'll be quite unbalanced right there. Switch over to the first satellite and point one of its dishes back at the one you just launched. That way, when it comes out from behind the planet, you'll have communication with it and we can make sure that we circularize it at a six hour orbital period once it reaches that position as well. If you're off by even a second in this orbital period, you can find that you'll shift by up to 20 minutes in an Earth year. So use your fine tuning to make sure that you get as close as you can to that six hour. My orbital period was only off by 0.04 seconds. So over the course of one Earth year, it should only drift by about a second or two. With the first two satellites launched, we can set up the third one to have everything pointed in the right direction before it's even released. Then when we get around to the periapsis on our initial launch, Launch, we can let it go and it can make its way up to the geosynchronous position all by itself under its own power. After that, Jebediah goes up to his apoapsis and reduces his orbit so the periapsis comes back down into the atmosphere so he can re-enter. The reason why that we had Jebediah on this launch in the first place is so that for those couple positions where we weren't going to have communications with the craft, he could take control and make sure that we could still fly everything. And that's pretty much it. The last satellite is circularizing at six hours. We're going to activate fine tune control mode on the RCS to get it as close as we can. Then we'll switch over and make sure all of the dishes are pointed in the proper directions. And after that, we'll be able to switch back over to Jebediah's capsule so that we can watch his re-entry and see that he gets safely home. Now there are many different ways that you can set up this network. And I'm sure some people are gonna go, well, what I like to do is do this. Well, this way that I just 
showed with the three satellites at synchronous orbit tends, in my opinion, to be the most popular of all the different ways to do it. It's not actually the way that I personally do it, but because it's the most popular, that's the way that I've shown. I like to use just two satellites, one above mission control and one just over the horizon on the opposite side. But until next time, I will see you later, Kerbinauts.